Welcome to the afterlife. You're being reincarnated as... A Quetzalcoatlus. You've been sent to the Lake Cretaceous, where you'll soon become one of the largest creatures to ever fly. That is, if you manage to make it to adulthood. Currently, you're buried six inches underground, sealed inside a squishy little soft-shelled egg, and one lucky predator away from never being born. So before that happens, it's time to break free. But that still doesn't mean you're safe. And at about the size of a crow, everything can eat you. Good news is, you hatch with wings strong enough to fly. Bad news is, they don't come with instructions. So while you learn how to fly, you're just gonna have to walk like the rest of us. And in these forests, that can easily turn into a death sentence. That's why your mom is here to keep you alive. Well, as long as you're worth keeping alive. Because if you show a hint of weakness, she'll eat you. That was Greg. He took too long getting out of his egg, and now he's dinner. Brutal, sure, but better you eat him than something else. Now that you're full, let's practice some more flying. Hmm, maybe launching from the ground is the problem. Maybe all you need is a little extra height. But the question is, who's gonna jump first? He'll walk it off. Probably. After about a week of practice, you're finally airborne. But that just means predators can come from any angle. So you might be in more danger than ever. But you know what's even more dangerous? Leaving your online security to chance. Imagine your dad is like a baby dinosaur in an egg. It's vulnerable, exposed, and waiting to be stolen. That's why I use NordVPN, the leading global VPN service that wraps your internet connection in a layer of top-notch encryption. Which means that everything you do online is hidden from unwanted eyes. Whether you're shopping, banking, or just scrolling through social media, NordVPN keeps your personal information secure. They also offer a vast network of servers worldwide, enabling you to access the internet as if you were located anywhere on the globe. This not only helps you bypass geo restrictions, but also protects you from DDoS attacks and network interference that could disrupt your connectivity. But the protection doesn't just stop at a VPN. NordVPN's Threat Protection Pro feature takes it a step further by blocking malicious websites and downloads before they can harm your device. It also protects against phishing attempts that aim to steal your personal data. Plus, with a dark web monitor, you'll receive immediate alerts if your personal information is detected on the dark web. So head over to nordvpn.com forward slash jhona so you can save money and get 4 extra months on a 2 year plan. And if you don't like it, there's always a NordVPN 30 day money back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com forward slash jhona. And thank you for sponsoring the video. Okay, now back to the more pressing issue. These skies are full of predators, but it's not pterosaurs you're going to have to worry about. It's actually going to be the flying dinosaurs. Not because they're big, the largest ones are only about the size of an eagle. What they lack in size, they make up for in maneuverability. Birds have feathers, which they can move in midair for perfect precision. You, your wings are basically long pieces of skin that start at the tips of your finger and end at your legs. Great for long distance travel, not so great when something's diving straight at you. But what you lack in agility, you make up for in size, eventually. Unlike birds, pterosaurs can get massive because they don't separate their limbs into different functions. Birds split the work, legs for walking, wings for flying. You, on the other hand, use all four limbs to walk, launch, and fly. This efficient setup allows you to grow to sizes no bird could ever reach. But that also means, when you're small, they've got the advantage. And it looks like another flapling is about to learn that lesson. You know what, you better get to cover before that bird comes back for seconds. This is where you're going to spend your first few years. The trees provide a resting place from the danger below, and the dense underbrush gives you a solid spot to hide whenever you need to disappear. But you can't just sit around and wait to grow. If you want to reach your full size, you'll need food and a lot of it. Luckily for you, this forest is crawling with options. Alright, so maybe you need a little practice. All the best predators have honed in their hunting techniques. Tyrannosaurs use ambush tactics, some raptors use pack hunting, and you? No idea. We know that you're not the most maneuverable, so you probably can't catch prey mid-air. But maybe you could try this. Some animals like black skimmers catch food by dragging their beaks over the water's surface, using their mouth like a fish detector. And with that long neck of yours, you'd be able to extend your head down while keeping your body safely above the water. Let's give it a try. Okay, bad idea. Your neck doesn't have any bony reinforcements to survive the impact of the water. 
so we'll need another method. How about rather than using flight to catch your prey, you'll use it to spot them from above. Then you'll land and like a stork walk around striking any animals with your long sharp beak. This is the best strategy, and over the next few years, you'll spend much of your time walking around through the underbrush, slowly leveling up your prey, starting with bugs and eggs, to small mammals and reptiles. You're growing fast. By year two, you're already bigger than any flying bird alive today. Your wings stretch about 15 feet across, and you weigh surprisingly little. Despite your size, you're only about 200 pounds. That's because you're built like a glider. Your wings are huge, sure, but your torso, relatively small. Not to mention you've also got hollow bones and a system of air sacs throughout your body that lower your weight while also assisting in flight. Even so, living in this forest is starting to be more trouble than it's worth. You're too big to comfortably hang out in the trees anymore, so you're forced to spend much of your time on the ground. Spreading your wings like this makes you look a lot bigger than you really are. It's an intimidation tactic, and luckily this time it worked. But with life on the forest floor, it can only work so many times. So let's get out of here. The open skies feel good, and you can really spread your wings. Things are really looking up, and it only gets better when you spot a dead hadrosaur below. This will be enough food to last for weeks. Let's dig in. Uh oh, that's a warning sign. She's telling you this is her territory, and there ain't enough room for the two of you. Okay, maybe not the best idea fighting someone double your size. So before this gets worse, it's time to bail. And you know, being big doesn't mean you get more. It means you need more. More food, more space, and a whole lot more luck. So your life becomes one long road trip. You fly when you need to cover ground. You walk when you're hunting, resting, or just trying not to burn too many calories. You spend a lot of the time wandering through the floodplains, coastlines, and even dried up rivers, always looking for something to eat. Thankfully, your palate has expanded. Now that your throat's nearly three feet wide, you can down just about anything, even some dinosaurs. Not bad. But life on the move isn't exactly safe. Predators are everywhere, and while you can hit speeds of 20 miles per hour on foot, there's always something faster. And that's when you take to the skies. So this time, you ride the winds, using the jet streams to fly above it all. Days pass without landing, till finally, a thousand miles later, you reach the coast. And on the beach below, you spot something strange. A group of pterosaurs that look a lot like you. But as you land, you realize you're huge compared to them. Your wings now stretch over 33 feet long. You stand as tall as a giraffe, and your beak alone is longer than a grown human. These guys, barely half your size. But size isn't the only difference. This species nests in groups, laying their eggs together for protection. You, you're more of a loner. And you'll spend most of your life solo. But who needs friends anyways? Though this does get you thinking. Maybe it's time to start a family of your own. Of course, you can't just mate with anyone. Someone's gonna have to win you over. And many males try their best. One brings you food. One shows off his colorful nose crests. And the others spread their wings to show you their size. But honestly, no one really stands out. Until one shows up, and he's got everything. And hey, look at that, he's even brought you flowers. This is the start of your family. As the weeks pass on, time gets closer and closer for when you're ready to lay your eggs. But before you do, you need one more snack to get you through the tiring process. You and your mate find a carcass, but a tyrannosaur has claimed it first. But maybe with the two of you, the predator will be too intimidated. And it seems to be working, until it doesn't. Well, I guess you found your meal. Since the Rex is busy with the bigger snack, your mates, now your dinner. Hey, better you eat them than something else. Now, time to search for a place to lay your eggs. You decide on the forest just by the stream, but it looks like this has been claimed too. Another Quetzalcoatlus has already laid their eggs here. So, you do what any responsible parent would do, you eat them. All of them. Just to give your babies a little less competition. You push your soft-shelled eggs out, and in a few more months, you've got some flapling Quetzalcoatlus just like you were. This will be your life, and you will lay many batches of eggs throughout it, though only a small fraction of them will ever make it to your size. You're the largest animal to ever fly, and nothing dares to mess with you. By about age 20, you've survived it all. Birds, raptors, even a T-Rex or two. You've outflown storms, outmatched rivals, and outlived almost everyone you've ever met. But even giants aren't invincible. Your wings don't carry you like they used to. Your reflex is slow, your bones creak. One day, while soaring high over the coast, you feel it, a shift in the wind. 
a crack in your wing. You spiral downward, gently at first, then faster. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And as always, Jehona out.